In this video, I'll be working through the question you see on the screen from paper 3-2 from 2024 of the Cambridge A-Level exam. If you're looking for a different question from this paper, check out the description below for a link to a playlist. And if you're looking for a different paper entirely, have a look around on my channel. I'll be doing all this on a whiteboard, hopefully just like you're used to your teacher doing. But remember, we're not in a classroom, we're on YouTube. So take advantage of that. Use the pause, uh, rewind and fast forward uh, buttons. Um, if you find this video or any of my videos useful, I would greatly appreciate liking, subscribing or even sharing. Question six gives us this equation and draws us the image of the function like this. And in part A, they ask us to find the coordinates of B. It's the, it's the maximum point on this. So basically we're gonna differentiate in part A and in part B we're gonna end up integrating. Uh, one thing that's gonna be hard in this question is that they're never gonna give us A. Uh, we're, we're always gonna just have to deal with A. And I remember when I went to college uh, to study maths, uh, somebody, somebody told me that you can say goodbye to numbers, it's all letters from here. And I think that's true, the harder maths gets, the less, uh, the less numbers we use, the more letters. And this, you're going to get a taste for that here. Um, so, okay, to do part A, um, they tell us M is a maximum point. So that just means the derivative of this function, or dy dx, e equals zero. So we're going to use that fact to solve this. So let's differentiate here. Uh, this is a product rule, two things multiplying. So the product rule here will differentiate the first one, that becomes one, um, and leave the second one alone, e to the minus ax. And then we'll, differ uh, we'll leave the first one alone, x, and differentiate this. Now, how do we differentiate e to the power of anything? Well, it doesn't change for the most part, um, unless there's something complicated up here. And there is, it's not just x. So when there's something complicated up here, we have to use the chain rule. I won't go into all the substitution because the question will get even longer. Um, but basically the chain rule will end up, we'll have to differentiate up here and multiply. So the derivative of this is minus a. So we'll have to multiply this by minus a. So uh, let's put a bracket around it, like that. Um, and later on in this question, we're gonna use substitution in integration as well. And again, the chain rule works the same. Uh, we, just, we just pretend this is simple. Pretend this is just an x. But the chain rule would end up differentiating up here and in integration it'll divide. Differentiation it multiplies, integration it ends up dividing. You can do it the slow way uh, but I, I think, I think um, for these questions you should be advanced enough to be able to do that. Hopefully. Um, anyway, okay, what have we got here? Let's, uh, let's start, let's take the same thing out of both of these because we have an equal zero here. Um, so we we'll get e to the minus ax goes into both of them. Uh, this one has a one, and this one will have a minus ax, and this both equals zero. Now, e to the power of something, it, it can equal zero. e to the power of something looks like this. Uh, this is minus, so it actually go the other way, but that doesn't really matter. Um, e can equal zero at minus infinity. So, a we know is positive. So when x is uh, positive as well, because we already have a minus, so when x approaches infinity, this could equal zero. But the, that's just talking about down here. When this approaches infinity, it does flatten out. So there will be a, a minimum down here. That's not what they're asking about. They're clearly asking about m. So, so this one's not what, we're not interested in this. So this, this doesn't equal zero in, in this world uh, for normal numbers, only for uh, infinities. So what we're left with is one minus ax equals zero. That means ax equals one. That means x is equal one over a. That, that's the answer they're looking for. Oh, sorry, they asked for coordinates. So they, they do also want y. Um, y must equal uh, one over a, because x, you know, you, we now know x. e to the power of minus a, one over a. They cancel. Um, so that becomes uh, one over a, e to the minus one. Or I guess you could write that as one over a, a, a e. So to put these two together into a, uh, a point, uh, one over a and one over a e. That's the coordinates of m. That's the answer to part a. 
Okay, hopefully you kept up with part A because it gets harder for part B. Uh, there's four marks for the first part, uh, five for part B. But I think it's it's probably more, it should be worth more than one extra mark. Because it, it's quite difficult, it's very messy, a lot of places where you can get lost. Basically they're asking us to integrate this. Uh, yeah, they straight up say that. They, right, we're asked to integrate this formula. You can think of it as a picture if you want. And they're asked to integrate between 0 and 2 over a. 1 over a is what we found in the first part. 2 over a would be here somewhere, okay, over a. So really, they're being asked to find the area between here. Okay, that doesn't help you in any way. It's, just, it's sometimes nice to see. Um, I guess we know we should get a positive answer. That's a something, <laughs> anyway. Um, so how do we integrate this? Okay, first thing I would suggest you think of is some sort of substitution. Looks like it might help here if we replace e to the minus ax by u, or maybe just the minus ax by u. We could, you could play around with that. Hopefully something would cancel, and you'd cancel all the x's out. It's, it's just, I don't see it. it. A to the x squared, that would actually, could work here. Um, you'd find that something could cancel out, uh, because the derivative of x squared would have an x, and that would cancel out here when you divide it. Um, not going to work out for you here, you, again, but you should try, because maybe you would have. What you're going to have to use here is the integration by parts. So we use that when we have two things multiplying in integration, and we can't find a nice substitution. Uh, you're given this formula, and uh, it's when the integral of... The last time I did this question in a previous, uh, in a previous exam, I use the formula I use here in Ireland, which is different than the one you use. They're, they both mean the same thing, um, but uh, I think your one's clearer. So I'll make sure to write it the way it's in your, um, uh, in your formula tables. So it's u times dv dx times dx. So that's two things, one and two. Again, two things here. And that can equal a uv minus the integral of, instead of u times dv, it'd be v times du dx and dx. So basically what integration by parts does is, instead of doing this sum, we switch them around and change them about and hope it works out better for us. It's not guaranteed to work, as, as we'll see in a moment. Um, we're just hoping it'll work. In fact, we'll get two different ways we can do this. One will work, one won't. The main first thing we have to decide is what is what. So we, have, we need to know what's u and what's dv dx. And our choices are these two here. Um, you get two choices. You, and again, like I said, often you can just pick whichever one you want and you'll fail within two or three minutes or yeah, 30 seconds usually. And you go, okay, I was wrong. I go back and I choose the other ones. Uh, this one's a little more awkward because uh, You'll, it takes a little longer to fail, but still, I'm going to show you the wrong way first, just so you can see where the failure comes about. So the wrong way to do this, I better just double check, is to take this second one here as the u, e to the minus ax, and then x would be this one here. Um, and that means, so once we've got the u and the dv dx, I now need the v and the du dx. So we turn this u into a du dx. Again, these questions come up pretty much every year, so get used to them. They, they work out roughly the same way every time. So we can differentiate this, and um, that's just, and uh, we did it previously, it's e to the minus ax multiplied by minus a. And then we need to get v. And we get v by integrating this. We can go ahead and integrate that. It's, um, it becomes x squared divided by one over two. And um, remember, this is the wrong path we're taking. So I won't spend too much time, but we're gonna end up changing this integral, I won't bother writing this part, uh, into this integral. So this will turn into an integral that looks like this. A v, which is a half x squared, and du dx, which is a minus a, I'll bring the minus a out here, or I could have left it with the two here, e to the minus ax. This is harder than the question we started with. This has x squared instead of an x. We're actually getting harder than we were previously. Although sometimes it can work out to set up a substitution. 
But this, I would suggest, is probably the wrong path to have taken. And once you get good at doing these questions, you we should have been able to see this. I, I was, now I have a lot of practice, I am, I am a teacher, but I was able to see this was the wrong path uh, very early. So I did that by just uh, thinking, what will this differentiate into? And I knew it would differentiate into something that looks roughly the same. That's what E does. And I thought, what will this integrate into? And I knew it would integrate into an X squared. And I knew these would have to go together. So just thinking into my head, I was like, well, X squared and this, I don't know how to integrate that. That didn't make it easier. So I knew this wasn't the right path. Let me rub this out and I'll, I'll, I'll go through my thoughts on what was the correct path. So when I was thinking, what was you? Um, I was thinking maybe, maybe you could be X because the, the derivative of X is just a one. That's nothing gets simpler than that. And what could be here? Well, that would, this would now be here. And I was thinking, I can integrate that. That's something I can integrate. It, it just basically comes out as the same, minus AX, but we end up dividing by the derivative of this. That's the chain rule, as I talked about earlier. So we end up dividing by one over minus A. So now the new integral I get would be a com com combination of one and this. One, I don't care about. Uh, one over A, I don't care. So basically, can I integrate this? Yeah, I've just done it actually. So this was the correct path. So I think about that before I go through this part. You don't have to. You have a bit of time in your exam. You can go down a wrong path and come back. But I just want to point out, you are able to do some of this in your head and think ahead, take a couple of steps ahead. You don't have to though. Anyway, let's go ahead and use this equation. Um, let me call this guy I. Save me a bit of writing. So I, instead of equals this, now equals over here, u times v. Well, that's just x times, uh, oh, v is down here. x times um, a minus from this minus, one over a, uh, e to the minus ax. Then I get minus the integral of v times du. That's um, v times du. Let's see, there's a minus in all that. So that'll come out front to cancel that one. Uh, I'll have a one over a, that's, that's just a constant. I don't need to leave that in the integral, I can bring that outside. I'll have a one, again, one multiplied, doesn't matter. Um, I'll, I'll only have e to the minus ax in here, and dx is still there. So now, instead of this integral that I wasn't able to do, I've turned into this integral that I can do. So again, all of this, this one here is still evaluated. You know, I'll, I'll ignore these numbers till the end. Save me a bit of writing, but it, we do have to put them in on this. Okay, so this becomes, I'll, I'll leave this one pretty much alone. Minus AX, um, and we'll integrate this one. We'll get uh, one over A, we'll leave out here. So the integral is, we just did it. It's E to the minus AX, and then chain rule tells us to differentiate up here differentiate up here and divide by the answer. So we divide by uh, one over minus a. Let's put a bracket around that. Um, really these, this minus can just come out here. You can, hey, let me just do it here. Save me a bit of writing. We end up with another minus, fixing that. Okay, and all of this is evaluated at, let's say two over a to zero. So we can just go ahead and put that in now. You can, uh, you can take things out of what it is, let me do that just one term. Um, let's see, we can take a, a one over a out of both of them. Um, I'll leave that though. Um, now let's take it out, a one over a. I don't think my notes did, but we can also take e to the power of minus ax out. e to the minus ax. So let's see, what happens when I took all that out? I would have left in a minus x. And well, there'll be two minuses anyway. Minus x, and, and this one I would have left in a minus one over a. Again, I still have to evaluate at these two points. I started writing a little bit too big here. I ran out of room. So let me just make a bit of space here. I should fit it all down the bottom left. So this is still i, uh, we're still evaluating at two over a zero. So let's put this in. Two over a goes into this. And we'll get out i equals, uh, let's see, one over a, e to the minus a, and x now becomes two over a, two over a. 
All that multiplies into minus x, well that's just minus 2 over a, and minus 1 over a. And then, that's it, we're finished for this one. Now we put in 0, well we minus and then put in 0. Uh, let's see, 0 goes in as here, e to the power of 0 is just 1. So we're just left with uh, 1 over a out front, 0 that disappears, and we're left with minus 1 over a inside that bracket. And that's it, we just clean some of this up. Uh, let's see, we have 1 over a outside, e to, these a's cancel, e to the minus 2. Inside this bracket we have uh, minus 2 over a, minus 1 over a, that's minus 3 over a. And uh, what do we have here? It's not 9, that's an a. <laughs> minus minus, that's plus 1 over a squared. And we also have an a squared here. a times a is a squared. So let's say, let's take a squared out of them. 1 over a squared goes into, what's left here is, is minus 3 e to the minus 2. And taking 1 over a squared out of this is just a 1. Um, you, you Feel free to rearrange this in different ways. I think I might have skipped a step there for some of you. Let me just check that is the answer. Uh, 1 plus, uh, 1 minus 3 times e to the minus 2 I have. So that's the same, yeah. Okay, that answers um, question 6. Quite long, quite complicated. Let me know if you have any questions about something I did there. Like I skipped over using the chain rule a few times. Hopefully you're happy with that. Uh, go back and check your notes. Uh, check, I have previous videos, I'm sure, on it uh, as well. It might be hard to find though. Uh, but ask me anything specifically. I'll do my best to answer you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.